Marima, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I think we're just getting started. It just takes a couple of seconds for everything to go. Yeah. Um, but we'll be here on YouTube Live. So everyone tuning in at the moment, um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so today's topic and what we're going to cover in our webinar is uh, talking about um, how Denmark is really willing the hyperscale business. We will come back to just a little setback um, that's been happening lately, but it's uh, something which is likely to happen and something which we're going to very openly cover, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, before we get uh, started and before we manage to introduce you to Marima, which is our, of course, our absolute pleasure, just a quick little note regarding myself. My name is Dermot Daltoon. Um, I run sales and marketing at Submar. Uh, we are based out of Barcelona, originally from Ireland. You can always get in touch with me by any of these particular channels, email, phone, um, Skype, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, you'll find me there and on LinkedIn as well. Um, and I would please like to ask everyone who is tuning in or anyone who is watching this recording also to subscribe to our Submar YouTube channel. Uh, we do produce some great content, like once a month we have these webinars like we have today, uh, but we also produce some other stuff which is more focused in and around immersion cooling. Also, you can follow Submar at all the rest of these channels. And I'm sure, Marima, you'll be sharing with us as well how we people can get in touch with you in a moment. Definitely. So before we get into everything here, uh, I'd like to let everyone know we have time for Q&A at the end of this presentation. Um, and we would encourage you also to type your questions during. And I'm sure that um, myself and Matteo, who's also there in the background. So again, a big thank you to Matteo and also to Mr. Jeff Hardy, people who helped put all this together who are in the background. But if you do have a question, type it into the chat section to the right of the screen in YouTube. And we will come to those questions during the Q&A section. So thank you very much. And without further ado, Marima, very, 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 very warm welcome. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just a tiny bit regarding yourself. Yep. Um, please, you go ahead. You tell us about you, most important. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's very kind of you. Um, I'm Marima Janic, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at the Danish Data Center Industry. Uh, we are a not-for-profit industry association representing the entire Danish data center ecosystem. Um, so, yeah, we... Uh, we uh, strive to create value for our members and uh, make it easier for data center stakeholders to do business in Denmark, um, as well as act as the bridge between the public and private sector organizations in order, for, uh, in order to help shape the framework and create really uh, optimal business conditions for opportunities in the data center sector. Okay, thank you. So, Marima, let's go a bit more into the, the Danish data center industry um, before we get into, I suppose, more of the meat of the conversation. Yeah. Um, and if you can just to talk us through, um, also where we're getting to what makes you guys special, because mm -hmm. we notice, at least here at Submar, that um, you guys are, as we said in the title, punching well above your weight. And we believe that the takeaway from this is very much going to be other countries uh, and other associations can do the same. So please. Yeah, of course. Well, um, well, at the DDI, our story really began two years ago. But what we really just to kind of outline the three core pillars that we focus on as an association. We um, number one is the you know, we're trying to positively influence the political agenda in Denmark uh, with regards to the Danish data center business. Number two is to really try to cater to the ongoing demand for skilled workers and specialists in order to support the digital revolution in Denmark. And the third is, you know, not least, shape and influence the energy debate, both inside and outside of the data center, which is quite, quite significant. And this is where I think, um, well, know that Denmark has a very unique positioning and opportunity. So um, on the second slide here, as you can see in our timeline, we really began two years ago. So we were founded in 2017. The initial conversation started in 2016 against the backdrop of Apple's investment in Bibo. 
by the founding partners, which is Kulvi, municipalities of Vibor and Olense cities, respectively, Grunfoss, Neuerlof, um, Schneider Electric, Chromatic, and the operator Global Connect. Um, they got together and, and really said, well, we really, really need to, to, to harness the opportunities here and organize ourselves in order to, to create uh, to create more business in the data center sector. And today we're a fully established ecosystem where we have uh, a broad membership group. We have 75 members, um, each representing various aspects of the industry. Um, and our, our future is to really be the leading voice for the Danish data center ecosystem. Okay, really cool. So um, you've got a, like, a, as you said already, like a very, very broad, broad um, membership base. And, and and just thinking of it here, um, maybe you can also take us through um, the importance again of bringing these people together and, yeah. Yeah, of course. Well, it's it, the industry is obviously quite young in Denmark, as it is in, in, in a lot of the Nordic market. It's not, you know, the Nordic market is not a tier one uh, data center market in Europe were we're regarded as the tier two level, so it's still quite young industry for us. But but that also makes it really really exciting because our membership pool, the seventy five plus members that we have, they're very broad. So the the knowledge pool in our station in our association is also quite significant, and it's really really great with such a big diversity because it enables us to facilitate interesting discussions, encourage cross collaboration across different sectors. We have uh, operators, we have vendors uh, for the data center sector. And we also have the energy utilities, uh, municipalities, and education system all represented in our association, which is really, really exciting for us to be the the, the turning point for all of these organizations, um, and and also to, to really facilitate the needed debates and 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 the topics that are really moving and shaking in the industry. Okay, and like looking at the the the, the opportunities that, that that are there, and and how you guys are positively influencing the data center industry in Denmark. Yeah, um, I know you've got like a solid solid program in place, and we will come a little bit later on to mm -hmm. your triangle and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But these are, of course, people uh, things that people can take away with as a template. But please, again, talk us through what you have. Of course, going back to the core pillars that I just mentioned, this graph that really mentioned that, that you have on the stream is really where we are, where we trying to develop, where we're trying to influence the different the different levels and where we're trying to be our ambitions. So when we started the association, this is basically our, our vision. And the number one thing on the graph is infrastructure development, a new solution. Well, that means where can we find the opportunities in Denmark? From an infrastructure development side, we really need to expand our energy networks to really optimize and distribute renewable energy, for example. So we're working really hard with our colleagues from the energy sector um, and, and the public sector here in Denmark to try to really make this happen in Denmark. Then we have um, the, the second one is education, training and training new specialists. So how do we, how do we, how do we train that and, and make sure that the that we have enough workforce within this in tandem with the growth of the industry. Um, and then the second one, the third one being accessing new markets and new businesses. Bear in mind that a lot of these significant hyperscale investments in Denmark contributed to um, a lot of local businesses who have not previously paid it to the data center sector suddenly receiving orders from these hyperscalers. So they're entering new, new markets and it's our job and our duty to help them navigate in this very complex market. So. And, and also, which leads us to the fourth point, which is exporting expertise. So we're also trying to help Danish companies, and not just Danish companies, but also international companies with exporting opportunities in, to, to Denmark and also Danish companies exporting outside of the Denmark within energy efficiency, heat reuse, construction, and, and more. Um, and all of that contributes to us really helping position Denmark as a leading Nordic data hub. Okay, maybe maybe taking it back to the point where you you, you were talking about where um, some people who have not previously worked together with the data center industry who are suddenly finding themselves in the middle of that or with hyperscalers, what kind of challenges are they facing? Oh, good question. Um, well, it really depends on what type of hyperscale operation it is and, and their level of engagement as well. But I think the number one challenge is that the sheer volume of it and the sheer order, the size of the orders is very, very significant. Um, and also the, the, the secrecy of this industry, obviously, it's very, very um, 
it's a very closed business. So it's very difficult for, for, for some businesses who have not previously catered to the data center sector to suddenly, you know, deal with different NDAs and clauses and, you know, having a very low profile, keep a very low profile because of the, what, you know, the, the customer demand. So I think that has been a challenge, but I think that the, the, the success stories that we've had so far, you know, they, they've dealt really, really well with it. And obviously everybody sees a really great opportunity. Okay, even though they probably only know these companies from the services that they provide exactly. rather than being, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a little bit of experience with that. My own brother-in-law has a construction company uh, in, in Ireland that worked on a tiny, tiny part of one of Facebook's data centers. And I know it was quite a huge experience for so many companies that were getting involved locally. So it is nice to see, of course, that they're um, bringing quite a lot uh, to those to those areas as well. It is, and they are, and they are. I think that, you know, there's a lot of interesting, like a lot of these really good stories cannot be mentioned due to various different um, business tr strategies from these investors. So of course, you know, these companies can't come out and say, well, we've delivered to this hyperscale or that hyperscale, but but there are a lot of, you know, behind the door, behind the scenes, a lot of success stories. And I think it's really, really, really well to see, well, really nice to see that the hyperscalers are really engaging with the local community and trying to, to draw them in and look at the different solutions of available already where they are placed because that really makes a difference. Okay, and maybe um, to everyone out there uh, from the US especially who's thinking, why did we as Submar really want to speak to uh, Denmark and to Marima from Denmark and why do we think that what they're doing is something very special? Um, maybe uh, just to put it in context, Denmark is considered a shining light within Europe um, for the green image, for how they work with renewable energy. Uh, they really lead the way in um, lots of areas which uh, end up being in, in which end up being used in, in many other countries. So um, having seen that they were working hard on attracting all of the data center industry, which is one of the biggest consumers of electricity and therefore one of the potential biggest um, polluters. Uh, while still managing to keep that. That's what really attracted us to this story here. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, so really we're, we're, we're super proud as Europeans of uh, what you're doing here. And we know that we're going to help to bring this as a, a template best practice blueprint to other areas of the world. Um, let's uh, just move on just a tiny bit here, just about the uh, fantastic place where we actually met in person, not for the first time, but for the no. second time, <laughs> where you, you hosted a wonderful, wonderful event. Please tell us about it. Thank you. Um, well, we we launched this event, so we're two years into our association, and on our two-year anniversary, we launched our first conference uh, together with the UNEP program, DTU Partnership, um, which is a collaboration between the UN Environmental Program and the Danish Technical University, and they are focusing um, quite a lot on the on the data center and the, obviously the escalating energy use globally. So they're currently working on a global data center partnership for energy efficiency. And of course they have uh, the UN city in Copenhagen, uh, which is international ground. And um, they asked us uh, if we could collaborate on this event uh, where they would host it and we would bring in the program and bring in the industry. Um, the industry um, to, to to basically really help facilitate a really important discussion on this energy usage and bring it also to a governmental level. So it was a really successful event and it saw tremendous opportunities within the, you know, highlighting the clean tech sector, not just in Denmark, but also in the Nordics generally, and, and highlighted different opportunities and why data centers really should be placed um, in the Scandinavian countries. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited about this event and we're looking forward to next year's edition. Excellent. And and to anyone who, who didn't have the chance, it was one of those rare occasions where the sun was shining in Copenhagen and it was absolutely great. But um, you managed to bring uh, to the table all of the heavy hitters. We had presentations from Microsoft, from Facebook. Yes from Google on the things that they're doing and that they've been trying out, covering everything from um, hydrogen fuel cells to other ways of in any way renewing, uh, using or leveraging renewable energy or improving the efficiency of data centers. So we got actual firsthand use cases. Mm. Um, so that was really great. I just, uh, you know, again, uh, hats off and I think it's fantastic. Um, 
Let's Thank go you. back to the Nordic data center market. And like, um, it's not only because I think of the environmental or the weather conditions that you have there. Tell us about the different factors. Yes, of course. I mean, I mean, there is the, the the Nordic market is really growing. Um, like I said earlier, the Nordic market is still considered a tier two data center market. Uh, the flaps, the Fr Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, and Paris, and D Dublin as well, um, they're definitely ahead of us in terms of in terms of scale and capacity. But but still, we have a very unique proposition here, as you can see with the numbers uh, published by the Nordic Council of Ministers in in late 2018, that investments in Nordic data center market was set to double by 2025. Expected annual construction investment will reach around between two to four billion euros. Um, annual projected installment between 280 to 580 megawatts per year. Then we also have, you know, not just access to renewable energy, but also we have major fiber optic installations linking the Nordic um, directly with, well, linking Denmark directly with New Jersey um, and Asia also planning. So, uh, so yeah, we will definitely see that the quickest routes to moving traffic will be in the near future via the Nordic countries, um, which obviously makes it a, a very optimal and attractive uh, data center. In with, yeah, I think, you know, they're very, very impressive numbers, especially if we go towards the higher end of the 580 megawatts. I think one of the un uh, other only, I know we're, we're talking about the Nordics, so we're talking about like a number of countries, but still the geographical space that they take up in comparison to some places in the US is actually quite small. However, so it's really, really impressive. Um, so um, what are you thinking about the location of Denmark and why, like, you know, we know that if you look at this particular picture here, of course, it looks like it's right smack bang in the middle of Europe. But I suppose most who are down like somewhere further south would consider Denmark quite far north. Well, yes. I mean, in terms of in terms of the location strategy, I think we have a really good positioning as the Nordics as well. But I think from our perspective, I mean, it, it's 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 really the, the the conditions that we have in Denmark that make it a very favorable investment uh, data center investment uh, country, if you may say. So, um, yeah, as a, as we mentioned, access to renewable energy, stable um, stable environment, stable political landscape, and also the ease of doing business in Denmark all contributes to making it an ideal location. I think also, I'm not sure if we're going to talk about this at all, but um, Denmark in particular is very, very high on the happiness index. Happiness? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's because um, I think the work-life balance is very, very good here. Um, I can attest to that, living, having lived and worked abroad versus uh, living back home and working home back home. Uh, the work-life balance is is really stellar in this country, and um, and and um, the ability to be um, to 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 basically balance the two uh, really has contributed to 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 the happiness index. Let's uh, get down to some uh, facts and some some real details, and maybe you, you can talk us through here uh, some of the major wins, some of the major gains uh, that you've had together with the uh, hyperscalers. I'm sure we'll also touch on on the latest piece of news from Apple as well. But let's let's leave that to the end of this particular piece here, and maybe you can talk us through the different locations we're looking at. Yes, I mean, this map really highlights the key projects that we have uh, either currently or future works in planned. Um, so these are just the major, there's lots of different projects going on as well, but these are just the, the, the key ones. So uh, in 2015, as I mentioned earlier, Apple announced that they were building a data center in northern part of or mid, mid Denmark um, in Viborg. Um, and that's uh, the first, I think, first installment is going live by the end of this year or beginning of, of, of New Year. Um, then we have the, the clockwise, the Facebook data center um, in Ulnse, which is in the right middle of, in the heart of Denmark, uh, which will also become live in 2020, I believe, the first, the first set of operations. Then the Nordic co-location operator Digiplex purchased um, Kilia, one of the operators in Denmark's all data center. Um, and Google also purchased both uh, two, two different lands in, in, in Obamra and, and for the rest of the southern part of Denmark. Um, then we have the, obviously the Cobra Cable Link, which is an energy um, well, power link uh, connecting Netherlands directly to Denmark. 
Then we have the Hal Fru, the Mermaid Network Connectivity which, uh, Cable, which will connect New Jersey directly to Denmark, which will also open up a tremendous opportunity specifically for the co-location sector. Um, and then we have the Viking link again, the, the energy, the power link, uh, linking UK to Denmark, that's also uh, landing in, in the western part of Denmark. And then least, last but not least, um, bulk infrastructure, co-location provider just purchased land in the city of Esbjerg, uh, where they're also current, where they just started to build. Um, Okay, and um, to anyone who has not yet heard of what we're talking about, we're now, I think today is the, um, it might be something in around the 18th um, of uh, June, uh, 2019. Uh, what is the story with Apple and with their planned new facility that they've now withdrawn? What's happened? Can you tell us about that, please? So yes, of course. Um, so Apple has already, uh, they announced the first data center site. Um, bear in mind, Apple has two land purchases um, outside of the US and Europe. Um, and that is, both of the sites are in Denmark. The first one would already start to build and the first uh, set of uh, a hole is becoming operational next year, is being built in Bibom. So the purchase uh, with regards to Auburn Raw was meant to be the second data center site. And um, last week they decided to cancel it um, due to various different reasons. Um, but uh, bear in mind that I would, I would like to highlight that the that the cancel project has not nothing to do with Apple um, withdrawing from Denmark because they're very much present in Denmark. But it was a strategic business decision from Apple that we have to respect as an investor because it's a highly dynamic market. Capacity plans change rapidly um, and, 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 and different forecasts. So, so they really decided just to focus on servicing um, everything from the Apple data center in Vivo, which has nothing to do with the tremendous work that Auburn Raw has done and the city of Auburn Raw has done uh, in trying to prepare the site. A lot of work which really, really needs to be recognized. And I'm sure that the investor, or like in Apple in this case, are respecting the work that they've done. Um, so we cannot emphasize enough that this is not due to unsustainability of the site. As Apple have said themselves, a strategic business decision which we have to respect. Okay. All right. I'm sure if there is anything else regarding that, we might get one or two questions, but that's absolutely fine. Thank you. Thanks again. I really, really appreciate the, you know, uh, addressing something like that. I know something like that can be awkward because it came up in between when we were preparing for this. Yes. So it's nice to be able to 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 address it or face it head on. Of course not. So, but also just to kind of also just to emphasize, um, there is a trend in the market uh, in Europe specifically on wholesale co-location growth, and that's specifically triggered in onset by hyperscale demand. So we're just seeing a demand of of changing business models. So um, it could possibly be that you know, as we're seeing in the rest of the Europe, especially in the flat markets, that um, they're simply deciding not to build themselves, but maybe just take up space in co-location facilities. So that's an interesting trend that we're definitely going to follow closely in Denmark as well. I think that many people in the industry know that what tends to happen is if it's going to be something um, where the hyperscaler or the, the end customer is going to build that site themselves, um, I think that many of those wholesale uh, co-location facilities have had to change their business slightly because they were missing out quite a bit. So totally mm. in agreement. And I'm sure that there's some element of that which is involved in that story too. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, you wanted to talk about Abendra. Yes, that was just quickly just to show that the sites and, and, and the ideal location of the sites and, and where um, where Apple was meant to build and really that the, again, that the tremendous work that the city of Auburn Ra have done, what the municipality of Auburn Ra have done to prepare the site and also to just really see the connectivity links and the power links and, and how much of an ideal location it really is for data centers, which really opens up opportunities to talk to other investors that are currently looking at the site right now. Okay, it looks like a place not to be missed, absolutely. So yeah. I'm sure that's going to be um, replaced with the great tenant sometime very soon. Absolutely. Um, okay, so um, talking about energy uh, and really, you know, staying green. And as I alluded to earlier on, um, Matteo and I had been chatting about this and wondering 
how is Denmark going to maintain this lovely green image whilst attracting <laughs> one of the dirtiest type <laughs> of people? So please um, help us understand. Yes, of course. You have a very lovely stat from the Danish Energy Agency forecasting that operations of data centers will account for roughly 17% of the Denmark's electricity consumption by 2030. Um, and you said also about half of this consumption will be related to cooling procedures. So why should data centers be placed in Denmark despite them taking up that much of electricity consumption by 2030? Well, access to renewable energy contributes to the overall goal of reducing CO2 emissions. We need data. Our entire world is dependent on data. So we need data centers to house all of this data. And future location strategies are determined by where it's mostly sustainably responsible. Placing them somewhere else where they feed off of fossil fuels will not help Denmark, nor will it help the rest of the world. In contrast, data centers help Denmark to reach its green energy targets and contribute towards the what we call electrification of Danish society, but drawing from wind energy, for example. We have a lot of wind that's blowing in Denmark, and it's a it's a really good opportunity to have these hyperscalers come in and draw off of that source. So here for us, it's really, really vital to develop energy storage solutions to tackle the intermittency problem, as well as build our energy network to be able to find that apart. Yeah, we're 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 seeing or hearing similar stories as well in the U.S. That um, uh, what we would uh, I suppose intuitively consider that some of the hyperscalers with this high energy demand, which are moving in 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 certain locations, where actually what they're doing is they are fueling and pardon the use of the word, they are uh, investing in green energy investments, Absolutely. which are which are really which which otherwise wouldn't happen, where otherwise people wouldn't have the money to move away from that um, oh. fossil fuel. Google in Europe made solar power cheaper by investing so heavily in it um, in, in Europe. So, so that's a prime example of that. And that, that's definitely the case of, of, of this as well. They're really contributing because they're offsetting everything that they do. They're offsetting by investing in, in renewable energy, which is in everybody's interest towards the end of the day. Yeah. And, and and again, maybe just a little bit more more generally, like, you know, I, I think everyone can hear your, your, your love for Denmark as well with everything that you're saying. And as I already said, we already look like extremely favorably or very fondly upon Denmark. And it's not only for the ham. Right. So no. <laughs> um, uh, maybe, yeah, just a little bit more about, you know, how else you think the, the, the so, so how we can help to transport that, that um, what embodies the Danish green spirit. Oh, the Danish green spirit. But other than, like, as you mentioned here, Denmark, the land of sustainability, as uh, you know, some of the points you've listed here is re uh, we have reliable power, reliable power grid with an uptime of 99.99% and 80% of power lines on the ground. We have, of course, a mild cloud climate that really enables low energy cooling all year round. Uh, we have good access to large scale sites due to low population density. Um, and also 72% of the Danish power supply does come from renewable energy, as I mentioned. Uh, and then again, uh, we use of heat for district heating, which forms around 64% of all Danish homes. And then we also have a very, very gro growing clean tech sector, which is also um, very fitting for the data center industry. And last but not least, I think other than the points just listed, I think, and the most important thing is that sustainability is really encoded in the DNA of the Nordics, which was mentioned at DCD London uh, last year, uh, the conference by the dynamic by Patrick Roland from NOPOL. He said sustainability is really encoded in the DNA of the Nordics. And I truly believe that because obviously coming from Denmark as well, we are taught to think, uh, to think green from a very, very early age. We're taught to think how how everything that we do impacts the environment. And I think that's really key to, to, to the data center sector. There's a saying in Denmark that if you to, to, if you take two people, two Danes, and put them on a remote island, the first thing that they will do is form an association. And what I'm trying to say with this is that we are a nation based upon dialogue. So we're very small and we recognize that we're small, but we're also very good on dialogue. We're really good. We, we love a good debate. And uh, we just had an election and uh, climate change was huge. And it could, you know, you could really see that it really moved the Danish population because it's something that we really take seriously and it's something that we do want to make a difference on. And I think that can only benefit data center investors because we have this open-mindedness and we have the ability to organize very, very quickly across 
what I call the triple helix model, where we marry up the, the public sector, the private sector and public institutions to create favorable conditions for, for, uh, for innovation. Um, so I think that's really what, uh, how the mentality is in Denmark is what uh, helps us uh, towards uh, our, gle our, our green targets. Okay, and, and, and I think um, even though you mentioned it, like the reuse of waste heat, like for district heating, Yes. Um, I, I know that there are there are programs in, in, in other European cities and I know that um, we as Submar are going to be working with some uh, cities and areas as well in the US, but we um, in particular in Denmark, we've just recently embarked upon a new little journey with Arlborg. Uh, university, so that where we're going to be working together on a project of that, they've got a very good um, relationship both to industry, to grown mm -hmm. costs, and uh, yeah. to others who are actually uh, suppliers of ours and everything like that. So it's a really nice um, all-around circular economy story, and Definitely. also embodies what we're all doing, indeed. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so you spoke about the three pillars already, uh, but maybe we can come back to them here with this with this um, image where you talk about the social, the financial and the environmental sustainability. Um, mm. Is there anything else you'd want to add in that regard? No, other than it, it's just a very good uh, illustration of how uh, we come together as a society to really create favorable conditions and 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 make everybody benefit, you know, for benefit for all, not just the prior, not just the the, the the investor, but also the society and and the regional and local communities. Um, so yes, I think that's what we're as DDI we're continue continuously to going to strive towards and uh, and and emphasize that in all the work that we do across DDI. So I know it's you know is everything here, but you are also saying that as a very simple concept or breaking it down to its absolute essence, this is what you probably would say you can attribute the success of what has happened thus far to having this very, very simple model. And maybe you could also share with us who who actually put this together and who really carried that idea through uh, DDI and through the um, the implementation of what you of your work so far. Oh, who put this together? Well, the triple helix approach is by the scholar, I believe, but I think um, it's it's very apparent in society in, in the Nordic specifically in the Nordic countries. But in terms of from our association, um, that's what I mean. Yeah, in terms of our association, we um, we just from the very establishment because you know we had to really quickly organize ourselves when we had the inquiries from these really large investors from the US coming and looking at, at sites as Denmark as a potential data center in, um, land. And um, our colleagues over at Invest in Denmark, which is uh, the foreign ministry's and uh, investment arm, uh, they've done tremendous work in lobbying the different, uh, lobbying for Denmark as a data center destination and, and getting these investments over. So it translated into that. And they, you know, when they the first site was announced, they data center side in, in Rebol. Um, the local community here in Rebol went together with the business uh, council here and, and quickly organized the different stakeholders across the different fields, um, both from the educational sector to the public and the private, and, and, and got together to see well, how, how can we really harness and how can we help this industry really manifest in Denmark. Um, so that was basically the, the, the core backbones of, of the start of our association. Okay, so yeah, you needed a model. This was a very simple model, something that was um, already identified and something that you decided to embody. And let's all be uh, open. Sometimes like simplicity is uh, always simplicity is best and something exactly. that everyone can latch on to. So that's kind of what I was trying to get to. But and, and, um, yeah, please. And cross collaboration as well. I mean, it's not a one man's job. This this industry is a huge energy consumer. So it's not one company's job. It's not one uh, country's job. It's everybody's business. It affects us all. And, um, and I think that's the mentality that everybody needs to embody is that it's not just one sector's job. It's everybody's jobs. And, and, and I think the way forward is to really collaborate across the different disciplines, sectors and fields. Yeah, you're you're also echoing um, personal sentiments as well from myself. It's not just one country's or one person's planet. It's all of our planet. And we have to find exactly. a way, you know, in order to say, OK, yes, we're not trying to stand in the way of progress. 
So mm. again, looking at what we're looking at now regarding the div- digital evolution being sustainable and how you are managing to communicate and also when you're educating people on it, maybe you can take us through that as well. Yes, I mean, like how the digital evolution can be sustainable. Well, first and foremost is um, uh, you build upon renewable energy and, and really integrate the data center into our energy networks to utilize the reuse of heat, which really supports the circular economy as well here. Um, latest approaches in, in cooling and and and, and in power and cooling innovations and making it easier for everybody in industry to adopt, not just the hyperscalers who have the firepower to adopt in the coolest uh, leading uh, technologies, um, but also for the co-location operators and, and to an extent, uh, large scale on-premise operations as well. Then we also have automation technologies, um, software-defined data standards, developments of AI, which can help. Google has used that in their data center to help reduce their um, energy energy bill in their own operations. So, so that will be really interesting to see how, how automation technologies will help um, lower the energy usage of data centers. And then if we take us through corporate responsibility and like the infrastructure we use, the circular economy here, again, the Google is really, really big on, so was the other purpose as well. Um, and last but not least, also to incentivize for investing for today for reusability in the future, which is really, really, really important. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the, you know, the circular economy, and I think um, nothing would, would embody that more than if we think about the, um, you know, I know we talk a lot about uh, OCP here at Submar, but the fact that there is an actual opportunity to even reuse hardware, a lot absolutely. of rare, rare earth metals and lots of other things which go into that, yeah? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the OCP does a tremendous good job and also a very good uh, uh, partner of ours in, 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 in looking at the various different aspects of, of data center stack and seeing how they can optimize processes. And it's a great sharing collaborative platform um, that I think is very vital, important for the data center industry. Um, which is a lovely segue into a little bit of your own journey into the data center business. And maybe, you know, there, there are some links between yourself and OCP, but that's a bit of a stretch. But let's, you know, talk to us about how you actually landed in oh, this weird yes, business. It was by pure chance. Um, if you asked me what seven, six, seven years ago, what a data center was, I would not know what that was. Yet I was an avid user of, uh, of all Apple products and Facebook and Twitter and before that, and Instagram and before that, uh, BlackBerry. I had a BlackBerry as well. So I did not know the works of IT infrastructure seven years ago. Uh, it was when I graduated from a bachelor in England. I moved to London and um, I did a few jobs and I landed in the finance sector. Uh, before uh, taking up a job at Capacity Media, working on telecoms conferences in Europe, Asia, and North America, which which gave me an insight into into the data center world, um, which also again led me to uh, work for Data Center Dynamics in 2015, where I was leading the EMEA portfolio of events um, as a conference producer. And for those people who do not know what a conference producer is or does, uh, it's essentially a market researcher. And uh, my job at Data Center Dynamics was to uh, research different topics and uh, speak to different stakeholders across in the industry and uh, come up with a, with, with a research report um, and, and, and write up a program and invite different stakeholders to our conferences. So you really have to know the ins and out of the data center industry um, as a conference producer. So that's how I landed in the industry. And um, last year, moved back home to Denmark after 10 years in, in, in London, um, uh, where I uh, continued the work in the data, in the data center industry with, the, with DDI. Okay, and uh, saying it very openly, they're very lucky to have you. And I think <laughs> that the uh, the previous experience you had in the conference industry is is definitely part of the reason for the for the resounding success of what happened. But I'm sure that just comes down to a lot of other things too. But cool. Mm-hmm. Um, another topic that we wanted to touch upon was uh, diversity in the Danish data center industry. And in general, I think this is a topic that um, is obviously very important to Submer, but also important to yourself. And maybe what is Denmark doing or where does Denmark stand on the world stage regarding diversity in the industry? 
Well, I think diversity in the industry in particular, I mean, we all know that we have a fundamental skills crisis. Um, as Jeff Omotruck said in your previous webinar as well, the rate of the growth is really disproportionate with the workforce. Um, and, and, and some of the turn in towns and data center cost survey um, show that only 12% of respondents believe that there are sufficient number of consultants and contracts in the market with uh, real data center experience. So we really have to look internally and see what we can do as an industry because the skills gap will not really solve itself. And we really need to work hard to meet the growing needs of this industry. Um, and, and, and and also to improve the, the, the gender diversity. In terms of STEMs, I mean, Denmark recently, uh, the Eurostat uh, research has ranked Denmark as number, number five in the EU with half of the STEM um, particip participation are female. That's really good, but it's still not enough. And we're still underrepresented. Um, females are underrepresented in the Danish data center industry as well as anywhere else in the world. And um, I really think that we really need to work hard on introducing STEM really, really early on in schools. Um, because a lot of kids do not know, the younger generations today do not know how the IT infrastructure, how the internet works. I mean, we've we've created this like mankind biggest machines according to patrick from, from from salesforce that he said in his ted talk uh, which is really interesting by the way um but but we don't like the younger generations that will lead the future do not know that it that how the internet works yet we so reliant on the on, on the internet so i think that's a fundamental problem and i think also that translated into the skills gap that we're seeing in the industry is yes Technological change from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and up to today have 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 brought forward IT, and it has disrupted, and it has uh, brought forward new industries and businesses. But at the same time, the pace um, where IT is maybe outpacing us, and we really need to we need to go and and, and really get to the grips of it in terms of in terms of producing stems really really early on. So in Denmark, we're seeing the same problem. Um, and from, from the data center industry, I think it's, you know, really important that we employ more women in the boardroom of these tech giants because they are the ones who set the standards for everything in the industry, the hyperscalers, uh, all the different technology solutions. And if we see more female represented in their boardrooms, I think that would probably also set a good example. Yeah, I mean, I've got a personal opinion just on, on, on that one last last point re regarding um, more women in the boardroom. Absolutely, of course. But I think what actually inspires people is seeing people. I think I mentioned this as well in the webinar with Jeff. Um, is, is people who are succeeding and like, you know, someone like a, like an Elon Musk or like a whatever. Um, mm. And we need to create those conditions where that can happen for anybody and for everybody. Exactly. Um, no matter exactly. what their gender, no matter where they're born, whatever else it might be, everyone should have the same chance of going out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, Schneider Electric as well, which is a huge industry player um, in the market globally. I mean, they have a policy around this and, and they're really, really uh, conscious and focused on, on, on this very point in terms of gender equality. So I think they're also a really, really good example, along with a host of other companies as well, of course. Okay, so um, we are going to move to our Q&A section uh, just at the moment. Um, I think so far we're, we're probably a tiny bit um, behind, like a couple of seconds behind as to what can I... The first question that we're looking at and addressing is, how does Denmark compare to other Baltic region countries? I'm not sure of the context, but it might be in terms of attracting data centers or something. So let's try it first, Marima, if you know, regarding and attracting the data center business. How do you think Denmark compares to other, um, let's call them Nordics in this regard? Yes, I mean, the Nordic countries are very similar with a similar type of environments and, and conditions and uh, business, uh, business frameworks as well. Um, but I think in terms of comparison, I think, um, obviously, our access to renewables, but you know you can get that anywhere in the Nordics. Um, our um, our ability to move really, really quick. This is a very uh, speed is everything. Speed to market is everything in this industry, and I think we are really, really fast. And from the building permits to 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 setting up businesses in Denmark, the ease of doing. 
in businesses. Denmark is very, very easy. Um, and, and the government is, is really incentivizing um, FDI. Of course, then you have, uh, which is really, really important, um, the, the connectivity points. Again, the, the, the subsea mermaid cable that's coming into operation next year will um, enable tremendous opportunities, specifically for co-location investors. Um, um, access to renewable power and um, and and low tax rates uh, all contribute to to making Denmark a really strong um, strong contender. Okay, super. And then, um, if we have um, anything else regarding, you know, you've already talked about the, the 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 placement of data centers there, the fantastic connectivity. Which should, of course, deal with any kind of latency issues. Mm. But um, is is there any other association within uh, Europe or the world where you've seen where you would like to, in some way, call them out? Um, where you would like to say uh, there are some fantastic things that they're doing, or maybe even their um, associations which are outside of the data center industry, where you're thinking they're an inspiration to you. Well, absolutely. The Dutch Data Center Association, they're a few years ahead of us and uh, Stein Grove, uh, the CEO there, has done tremendous uh, work with the industry. So, of course, we're in constant dialogue with them. And we've uh, recently, just in January, we went aboard, went to a study trip, exchange trip to the Netherlands, where we had some dialogue to see how they organize themselves and how they set. Of course, they have the luxury of being in the tier one data center market in Europe. But nevertheless, they've done a really, really great work. In, uh, and also the European Data Center Association, which is the umbrella organization for all these associations in Europe, um, also doing a really, really fantastic job. Um, the DCA in the UK, Tech UK as well. Um, so th there is a lot of really, really great um, organizations. And we're constantly looking to collaborate again, because that only... Um, echoes again what I've said earlier that we cannot solve this problem by ourselves and just the sheer amount of data that will you know that we will need in the future especially once 5G hits um, there is enough business for all of us but we really knew, do need to collaborate with each other so it's a win when a data center lands in the Nordics whether it's in Denmark whether it's in Sweden or Norway or Finland it's a win for everybody um, and it's also a win if it lands somewhere else in Europe um, and I think it's really our duty to, to, to emphasize collaboration. Yeah, I mean, from 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 our perspective and looking at at the Danish data center um, at, at DDI and, and and why you stood out, um, which is which is maybe a little bit strange, is partly also because you're a country of around about five million people, right? Yes. Um, and we're talking about, uh, you've named associations from the Netherlands, that's around 40 million people from yeah. the UK where we've got like, I don't know, close to 80 or 69 or whatever million people, something like that. So really, you know, for us again, it, it, is, it is a super thing that you're doing. And even if you are starting a little bit later, which I think is still the power of innovation or of agility, or of you not having been involved for, for that long, but um, I, another question regarding, uh, so do you help um, hyperscalers or prospective, uh, let's say, wholesale uh, co-location tenants, um, do you help them with energy purchase agreements uh, for stuff like that? Uh, our colleagues that invest in Denmark, they are usually the first point of contact um, when an investor is looking to invest in Denmark. And then we come in as a second step uh, to help them navigate uh, with the different local markets, the municipalities, and and facilitate the different uh, the connections that they need. Okay, so you are covering that, like, let's say, even though you're not doing it yourself. We're all um, collaborate really closely with each other. Gotcha. In Denmark, they, they, they are working really well on, on that. Um, how, how do you guys uh, in Denmark react to um, what is booming in, in Iceland, for instance, at the moment, like crypto mining and stuff like that? What's the current take of your industry on it? Ah, Good question. I think in terms of um, the, the specific needs of cryptocurrency, I think it's uh, they're better placed in a much, much cooler climate uh, where there's lots and lots and lots of snow um, because they they don't require, uh, they don't care about latency. They just care about, you know, very, very 
quick and cheap uh, power. And I think uh, we're letting our Nordic, more Nordic uh, uh, partner countries um, take over that market because um, that's a very specific market and, uh, and their needs are very, very specific. Answered very carefully, very occasionally. Perhaps we can get back on that one over a coffee or something at some stage. Um, um, and anyway, Marima, just looking at the time, and really, I, I just want to, um, you know, thank you so much. But I'm just going to go through just a couple of quick little things first of all to wrap this up. Um, just letting people know regarding uh, where Submar is going to be or is at the moment. Um, we're at the uh, ISC in Frankfurt. Uh, that's actually where I'm calling you from today or where we're connecting from. Um, and we're going to be here until the, the, the 20th. Uh, that's the high performance computing, the supercomputing European gathering. Uh, the sister conference is supercomputing 2019, which will be taking place in Denver, Colorado in November. But we're also going to be in San Francisco very soon. Um, the OCP Regional Summit, always talking about OCP. Uh, JITEX, uh, which is a great event in the Middle East, very general, but we found it very valuable last year. Um, DCD in London, we're going to be there from the 5th to the 6th of November. Um, and again, I would like to ask uh, people to maybe save the date for the next webinars we're going to do. We will continue to bring you uh, people and one of these, Marima, you know, we'll talk about that just a second. But we have, first of all, a, a fantastic guest um, in the next month on the 9th of July, uh, Suvo Jat Ghosh, uh, who is the co founder and managing director of Computing Infrastructure Research Center. And then in August, we're going to change the date slightly or change the timing, have it really at the end of the month. So hopefully you'll all be back from your holidays, well rested, et cetera. You can tune in there. And we have the pleasure of having a fantastic human being who was mm -hmm. instrumental during your uh, event, yes. uh, Susanna Cass. And the champion of the energy, of the energy story and a very, very uh, a spokesperson for sustainability in the data center world. Absolutely. And I believe she is also now working directly with the United Nations as well as her Stanford and base layer uh, activities. Yes, yes, absolutely. She's OK, one last reminder to everyone, please, to subscribe to the Submar YouTube channel. Follow us on all of these. Feel free to reach out to Marima um, or to us or to me personally with any other questions you may have. Uh, some of you will, will be watching this recorded. Um, but anyway, um, Marima, it remains to say thank you so, so much. Um, I don't know if you know how much we appreciate you doing this and taking part. Um, and may we uh, partner and maybe we, may we have a long um, time getting great news from Denmark, from sustainability and for flying the flag. And thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us, Dermot. Much appreciated.